This time on low boost, we're putting a loud valve on our E36 Turbo LS swap. So when I did everything, obviously I wanted the tailpipe to be out the back like that, right? But I made myself a little fail safe. All the way underneath the car, I made myself a cutout in case I got too much exhaust restriction with the three inch muffler. And I think I have that. So I'm gonna try to make an exhaust system come out of this cutout and come up into here and because this doesn't have the same style as that side, maybe just have a turn down here, you know, coming out to here, so it's kind of out of the way. So to really prepare myself for this, when I built the Turbo LS swap, I welded this cutout um, on already. It came with a whole Y, all you had to do was weld here and weld there, and it came all together. <clears throat> and I did this because I live in a, a residential neighborhood, right? And I don't want to be coming home at night where it's really loud out and people getting pissed off. So we had a muffler. The problem with this muffler is it's only three inches. So this is really where my exhaust restriction is and it was killing my boost. So as soon as I took this off and drove around with this on wide open, um, it was loud and it droned inside the car because it's right underneath it, right? Um, my boost problems totally went away. So I picked up this butterfly valve, got an e on eBay from Badlands. Um, I got this one specifically because it's e more easily to rotate underneath the car and it's kind of tight there. So this will, this should still work pretty good. Um, three and a half inch butterfly valve. This thing should open it right up and allow me to have the car be a lot louder and flow freer with the exhaust uh, so I can make boost properly. So what I want to do is, I want to put the cutout on and have it kind of come out up and around or turn down here. So I, when I'm driving through a neighborhood or coming home or just where I don't want to be loud, I can have it shut. And then when it's time for the rowdiness, I can open this thing up. So I have it off. The, this kit that I got came with an extra exhaust gasket, which is perfect. So I'm going to try to find a good mounting position for this. Um, that might actually do it there. I might have to cock it up like that. We'll see. So first shot with the valve, um, just hooking it up to positive and negative actually closes the valve. Reversing polarity, negative to positive, is it actually opens it. And then go back again. That's it actually closes it. So I have to figure out a, a switch that reverses polarity. That's all. First off, I ran probably about eight to nine feet of red and black to the cutout itself. It's gonna function for power and ground. Uh, I'm still gonna try to figure if I can get the flaps to open and shut before I wire it up to kind of figure out how I'm gonna do it. But I have a pretty cool spot where I wanna put it inside the car. Um, if you want me to do a separate video on how I do wiring, let me know in the comments below. I just use these simple like uh, crimp and heat shrink uh, wires. I do have some solder connectors too, but they're not here right now, but these should work just fine. All right. It's connected. Now, before, before you guys go crazy and say, oh my God, it's underneath your diff. It's going to hit the ground. The car is pretty high off the ground. I don't have it lowered. Um, and that whole exhaust section sags pretty low. Um, I've put thousands of miles on this car. I don't go off-roading with it. Um, it's, it's not going to hit. It hasn't hit. I don't expect it to hit. Um, it's going to be fine. So pretty good. Pretty happy the way it sits like that. And I'll just wire it up and into the car and then we'll figure out our wiring situation. So there's the wire there. Easy tuck. Things you want to keep it away from. Things that'll get hot and things that'll spin. Drive shaft, exhaust. So both are pretty much away there. A couple inches away. And then I'm going straight up and I'm going to meet it where my shifter is on that side 
and then I'll pull it up through the dash because there's a spot there. This episode is brought to you by Buyer Driveline. They're the BMW driveline specialists. Whether you have a factory BMW that you need a new drive shaft made for, or you want that one upgraded, or you have a BMW you're going to be doing a swap in and you need a custom drive shaft made, make sure you guys check them out. They can make just about any drive shaft for any BMW application, you name it. They're designed to handle power, not just factory BMWs. They'll also do a custom drive shaft for any swap you're gonna put into them, whether it's another BMW engine into a BMW, to JZ engine, or my favorite, LS swaps. They can make a custom drive shaft for literally anything BMW. If you use the link in the description below, you'll get 10% off any drive shaft you get from them. So make sure you guys check them out for all of your driveline needs. Okay, so next up, like I said, I wired it up and through and I could punch this out here to have a spot. Um, let's start by doing that and see exactly what we come up with afterwards. Okay, that's not like that. I think I'm gonna have to cut that out a little bit because the switch that I have is this one here. You have to have a six prong switch. This gets power, this gets ground, this gets power, uh, this gets uh, positive and negative from the cutout, and then this gets negative and positive from the cutout. And then when the switch is in this position like this, it's not on. When it's in this position, it's opening it, and when it's in this position, it's shutting it. It's reverse polarity. So it has to be reverse polarity to get it to work. This is like a simple window switch, you know, window switches in cars. Um, a momentary switch. I like this one in particular because it's not going to stay on. It'll cut, it'll go back into this position, which is the off position. So I'm going to see if I can cut this out a little bit more to get that to fit in there like that. That'd be really cool. First, I'm going to test it out and uh, wire it up and see if it works either way. All right. So I saved you the boring wiring montage time lapse thing. Um, so I split. This is come, these are, these two wires here are coming from the cutout. I split it in to two, both two power, two ground, right? That's gonna get plugged into my six way switch, but they're gonna get inversely plugged in on either side. So one will open and one will close. And then my power and ground are gonna go in the middle. So let's try this first. So there you have it. The whole car is set up now so I can go loud with the push of a button. I'm still gonna tidy it up a little bit inside the car. I'm not absolutely in love with the switch, so I'm not gonna cut that out just yet. I'm gonna try to find like an E36 window switch or something uh, to make it look a little cleaner, but it'll work for now. Um, but let me know what you guys think. If you're interested in videos like this, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. I upload a video every week about cars, whether it's my E36 Turbo LS swap, a bunch of other projects that I have going on. I'm even actually making my do-it-yourself air conditioner back there uh, that could potentially work in this thing or the boat or whatever other thing I wanna stay cool at because it's hot as balls right now. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'll catch you 
in the next one.